early 70s? Uh, well, here's, here's what's said, and here's what the African American community will tell you. Uh, other than going to schools, other than the schools desegregating, the black community really went backwards. In other words, we relied upon each other. The village was intact. The reasons that our children, the children in, the children in schools now, and the children that are being raised by you know, families, one of the reasons there's so much crime, there's so much uh, teenage pregnancy, there's so much whatever, is that the village fell apart. My neighborhood, in my neighborhood, it was not permissible for me to do anything wrong. I couldn't do wrong, not in just in my house. I couldn't be out on the next street doing anything wrong because everybody knew who I belonged to. There was a sense, this was said every time I left the house, when I left the house, look, I'm going, to, I'm going over down to Paul's to play. The, the statement was always made, don't remember who you, don't ever forget who you belong to. <laughs> Meaning when you leave this house, you represent this house and you didn't want to do anything you didn't ever want to do anything to hurt or disrespect your, your parents. And so you just didn't. And so, um, here's, here's the flip side of that because I've noticed this. And on one hand, I think academically, the African American community, because it was not impressed upon kids after me, well, the timing is critical. For me, I had have, I have the best of both worlds. But kids who came behind me, who started in the first grade in 1965, all they knew was desegregated schools. They know nothing about that, and they grew up different. I even watched that on this campus, how you have African Americans who are members of Delta Tau Delta, or who are members of Kappa Alpha fraternity, and I'm thinking, what? because they grew up in a different world. These. What, what's the meaning behind that? What do you mean? When I was in school, I'm a member of a, of a fraternity. The KAs was an all-white fraternity. And very, very white. Yeah. <laughs> and their spirit. Yeah. And the the delts del were all white. Okay. And it was never, it was never thought of that an African American would even desire to be a part of that group. And now it's just common, and it's because their experience is so different from mine. There was an um, incident that we heard about in the early 70s between the Kappa Alphas and a black fraternity. Were you, were you aware of this? Do you remember anything about this? I'm well, that was something that Ivory Moore told us. It was a, it was a white fraternity and a black fraternity. And his, it was his fraternity, and he was sing, they were singing their uh, fraternity song in front of, of, of uh, Ivory Moore's apartment, which was recently that little section had just been integrated. And, and he said they thought that the students were, were singing... They misinterpreted their lyrics. Should, they were saying black, uh, keep the whites out, or something like this. Do you remember anything like that? Yeah, he's, he's got to be talking about... the. the the, the fraternity is Kappa Alpha Psi. Okay. Yes, it, that's okay. Yeah, that's Mr. Moore's fraternity. And I don't remember the incident. Okay. But it had, that fraternity started up, their charter line started when I was a senior. It could have happened, I doubt that it happened when I was here or I would remember it. Because um, I was, I left in 75 and they started in 74. Okay. Let's let's uh, change the tape. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this is all good information. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, and he always yeah his comment was always have a frog sticker, always have a handkerchief, and at least have enough money to make a phone call. Wise advice. Wise yeah. advice. Um, let's yeah. okay. keep, let don't be hesitant or shy about letting us know about the time. Okay. Because we. We can come back or 
we want to make sure you get on the road okay. before the ice gets there. Yeah, and mine is, I don't think it'll be a problem. I just need to get to the, the dealership to get her car first. Um, I'm interested in this uh, disintegration of the of the village. What, right. what were what were some of the factors that that, that well, contributed to that? Well, it's decline. Yeah, part of it is uh, accessibility. Uh, there were neighborhoods that African Americans essentially you could move, you couldn't live, you were you were relegated to living in certain certain areas. Uh, African Americans, like any other culture, want the very same thing. They want a safe neighborhood. They want clean streets. Uh, they want good schools. And so we're all looking for the same thing. And when, because of accessibility uh, and the opportunities for people to move, uh, people talk about white flight. There was more than white flight. There was black flight also. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. We ran. We ran from the cities. We went to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and because of that, um, there wasn't a lot of mobility with families, for families, when I was growing up. And so my friends, we all lived in the same houses. I mean, we weren't that mobile. We lived in the same houses all of our lives. And so the village was there. Um, parents pretty much... Yeah, and I found that I found that interesting about most of the students who I met and became friend, friends with here. We all basically had the same values. Hmm. We grew up in the same kinds of homes that were fair, firm, and consistent. You didn't talk back. You didn't even didn't think it. If you thought it, you better do it quietly. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're on to you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so um, I think pretty much it's because of people decided I want something better for my children and for my family and so they moved and left the neighborhoods and didn't return. Yeah. And as a result the people who moved in came in maybe younger with different experiences and so um, they didn't try to connect. I am the, the staff knows this. I am the crazy neighbor on my street. <laughs> I know everybody. As they say, I know Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. <laughs> uh, I made a habit to know them because it's easy to know them. I know all my neighbors. All my neighbors' phone numbers and names are on, a, are, are on my refrigerator. Because if something happens at your house, it affects my house. If something happens in my house, it affects your house. Uh, I even... Dallas Central Appraisal District, I went up and I printed out everybody's name who lives on my street. I want to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, because I grew up that way, and because, wow, I grew up in a, in a neighborhood at a time that if you just so happened and didn't like what your, what your parents cooked for dinner, you could call your neighbors or call your friends and say, hey, what'd your mom cook? <laughs> And you could go down there and say, I'm going to go down to Mrs. Cars and eat. Is that all right? Yeah, going down. Put her on the phone because you couldn't, you couldn't go to your neighbors, you couldn't go to your friends' homes unless the parents talked and knew you were going to be there because they believed in adult supervision. Mm -hmm. you, you needed supervision. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was pretty much it. I think you know, people's desire to live in a desegregated environment is what pretty much not totally disintegrated but the village moved away yeah. well so when you came to AM commerce east texas state uh what when did you become aware of of the norris community when did you you began to go to the mount moriah church mm -hmm. right okay immediately because when i came here i lived in sykes hall and what was interesting there were nine African Americans in Sykes Hall uh, and eight of us lived in the same little section. <laughs> Coincidence. That, that, that angered me from the very beginning. Oh wow. Yeah, because yeah. the assumption from the person who assigned us is that we were all the same and I was different as day and night as those kids who came from DeCab, Jefferson, 
they were the rest of Atlanta. I was a city kid. We were different as day and night. We had the same skin color, 